after studying this module you shall be able to know the concept of happiness and its related concepts learn the components of happiness and understand the theoretical perspectives on happiness thinking and philosophizing about happiness dates to the dawn of civilization though ideas about what happiness is and how to achieve it have changed dramatically philosophers and religious thinkers often define happiness in terms of living a good life or flourishing happiness in this sense was used to refer to the greek concept eudaimonia aristotle valued intellectual powers over practical ones for most ancient greeks happiness was largely related to luck and fortune the important thing for aristotle was not to seek happiness for its own sake but to live virtuously epicurus and his followers considered happiness to be the presence of pleasure and the absence of pain later in the middle ages the issue focused on one's relationship to god but enlightenment thinkers in the 17th and 18th century saw it more as a self evident truth to be pursued and obtained in the here and now indeed in 1776 america's founding fathers declared the pursuit of happiness to be one of man's unalienable rights apart from life and liberty in the 19th century matty noted british utilitarians like john stuart mill sought to define and measure the value of actions by how much happiness they produce and the quality of that happiness also how it was distributed throughout society it is better to be a human being dissatisfied than a pig satisfied mill famously said matty further explained mill's reasoning the greater the quantity of happiness spread most widely over the population that the action produces the better the action is and dina aggregated data from 916 surveys of happiness life satisfaction and subjective well-being over a million people in 45 nations he found out that the average person is moderately happy understanding and facilitating happiness and subjective well-being is the central objective of positive psychology according to seligman happiness and well-being in this context refer to both positive feelings such as joy or serenity and to positive states such as those involving flow or absorption positive psychology focuses on understanding and explaining happiness and subjective well-being and ascertaining factors that influence happiness positive psychology is concerned with enhancing subjective well-being and happiness rather than providing remedies for deficits thus positive psychology complements rather than replaces traditional clinical psychology happiness is commonly understood as how much one likes the life one lives or the degree to which one evaluates one's life as a whole positively a central element in this definition is subjective evaluation or liking of life also referred to as satisfaction with life these words refer to a mental state but leave some ambiguity about the precise nature of that state when you 
used in a broad sense, the word happiness is synonymous with quality of life or well-being. The question what is happiness has no straightforward answer as the meaning of the question itself is unclear and ambiguous. The word happiness is therefore used in reference to different meanings that are often mixed up. Therefore, a review of the various definitions about the concept of happiness is as follows. Let us look at the affective definition. According to Wesman and Riggs in 1966, happiness appears as an overall evaluation of the quality of the individual's own experience in the conduct of his vital affairs. As such, happiness represents a conception abstracted from the flux of affective life indicating a decided balance of positive affectivity over long periods of time. The Cognitivist Definition Happiness is also defined as a cognitive phenomenon. In that vein, McDowell and Newell describe life satisfaction as a personal assessment of one's condition compared to an external reference standard or to one's aspirations. Several definitions combine one or more of such elements to define happiness. Diener defines subjective well-being as being satisfied with life, that is attitude, while feeling good, which is affect, in his own words. Thus, a person is said to have high subjective well-being if she or he experiences life satisfaction and frequent joy and only infrequently experiences unpleasant emotions such as sadness or anger. Contrarywise, a person is said to have low subjective well-being if she or he is dissatisfied with life experiences little joy and affection and frequently feels negative emotions such as anger or anxiety. Let us now look at the related concepts of happiness. Well-being. Well-being is a dynamic concept that includes subjective, social and psychological dimensions as well as health-related behaviors. Psychological well-being, social well-being and health-related quality of life are constructs which are related to but distinct from subjective well-being. Psychological well-being refers to the achievement of one's full psychological potential. The construct is central to the humanistic tradition. Professor Carol Riff is the leading researcher in this area. The Riff Scales of Psychological Well-being is a theoretically grounded instrument that specifically focuses on measuring multiple facets of psychological well-being according to Riff and Keyes. These facets include the following Autonomy Environmental Mastery Personal Growth Positive Relations with Others Purpose in Life Self-Acceptance Keyes A. All in 2002, in a factor analytic study involving over 3,000 Americans aged 25 to 74 years, found that psychological well being and subjective well being were related but distinct constructs which correlated differentially with socio demographic variable and personality. Social well-being refers to positive states associated with optimal functioning within one's social network and community. It refers to an end state in which basic human needs are met and people are able to coexist peacefully in communities with opportunities for advancement. This end state is characterized by equal access to and delivery of basic needs services such as water, food, 
shelter, health services, provision of primary and secondary education, and the restoration of social fabric and community life. Quality of life When used in a broad sense, the word quality of life or well-being is synonymous with happiness. In this meaning, it denotes that life is good, but does not specify what is good about life. Quality of life is a far broader construct than subjective well-being. It is a complex construct which covers a variety of domains including health status, work role status, availability of opportunities to pursue recreational interests, social functioning in friendships and relationships, access to healthcare resources, standard of living, and general well-being. Subjective well-being Subjective perceptions of well-being have three components. A cognitive component, which is often described as life satisfaction, and positive and negative affect. The preponderance of positive over negative affect can be described as happiness according to Brad Byrne. He showed that pleasant and unpleasant affect are somewhat independent and have different correlates. They are not simply opposites of one another. Thus, the two affects must be studied separately to gain a complete picture of individual's well-being. The components of happiness include high positive affect, absence of negative affect, and high life satisfaction. Thus, the affective factors represent the emotional experience of joy, elation, contentment, positive emotions, and cognitive factors represent cognitive evaluation of satisfaction according to Andrews and McKinnell. Affective factors. It contains high positive affect, low negative affect and high life satisfaction. It compasses all the feeling states having tremendous influence on our behavior. It influences the way information is encoded, processed, organized and retrieved. The nature of affect. Positive affect reflects the extent to which a person feels zest for life, is active, excited, strong and enthusiastic, whereas low positive affect reflects fatigue. Positive affect has a favorable impact on learning, creativity, problem solving and interpersonal relationships. Negative emotions or negative affect in contrast, represent the extent to which a person feels upset or unpleasant, distressed, nervous, guilty, or anxious, etc. Negative affect is associated with psychophysiological complaints and poor mental health. Positive affect makes people feel good about themselves. Positive and negative affectivity. There are about 550 and 600 words for different emotional experiences in the English language according to Averill. There is a good evidence that a dimensional approach accounts for much of the variability in emotional experiences. An extreme range of emotional experiences may be described in terms of the circumflex space defined by two broad dimensions. It states that affect exists in two dimensions. One, describing positive versus negative valence. And other, delineating activation levels, according to Russell. Some researchers such as Larson and Dina and Averill have labeled these dimensions activation or arousal and pleasantness or evaluation. Activation or arousal ranges from highly activated or aroused to a low level of activation or arousal. Pleasantness or evaluation ranges 
from pleasant or positive to unpleasant or negative. A number of important findings have been made concerning positive and negative affectivity. Positive affectivity is correlated with extraversion and negative affectivity is correlated with neuroticism. Another finding reveals that positive affectivity after the age of 30 is very temporarily consistent while negative affectivity on the other hand peaks in late adolescence and then declines with age at least until middle adulthood. Positive and negative affectivity have heritability coefficients of about 0.5. However, environmental influences can improve positive affectivity. Both positive and negative affectivity represent the experiential components of neurobiological systems that evolve to address different evolutionary tasks. Positive affectivity is associated with regular physical activity, adequate sleep, regular socializing with close friends, and striving for valued goals rather than attaining them. So, positive affectivity may probably be enhanced to engaging in regular physical exercise, maintaining a regular and adequate pattern of sleeping, making and maintaining strong friendships and socializing frequently with friends and working toward personally valued goals. Cognitive factors. Tafrikovic stated that happiness requires total satisfaction, that is, satisfaction with life as a whole. Enduring satisfaction with one's life as a whole is called life satisfaction and also commonly referred to as happiness and subjective well-being. Review of literature reveals that after World War II, survey researchers began polling people about their happiness and life satisfaction. George Gallup, Gerald Curran and his colleagues and Hadley Cantrell pioneered the use of large-scale survey. Although early subjective well-being studies were characterized for very short scales, Dina proposed that a national index be created in which subjective well-being would be tracked over time. Theoretical Perspectives on Happiness Many theories of happiness have been proposed since Aristotle's brilliant insights. These theories can be categorized into three groups. Need and Goal Satisfaction Theory, Process or Activity Theory, and Genetic and Personality Predisposition Theories. The first constellation of theories centers on the idea that the reduction of tensions, that is, the elimination of pain and the satisfaction of biological and psychological needs, leads to happiness. Freud's pleasure principle and Maslow's hierarchical needs model represent this approach. Goal theorists argue that individuals attain subjective well-being when they move towards an ideal state or accomplish a valued aim. One implication of tension reduction theories is that happiness occurs after the needs are met and the goals are fulfilled. The next models of happiness state that engagement in an activity itself provides happiness. Most notably, Sixon Mihaly suggested that people are happiest when they are engaged in interesting activities that match their level of skill. He called the state of mind that results from this matching of challenges and skills flow and argued that people who often experience flow tend to be very happy. Similarly, Cantor and her colleagues, Sheldon, Ryan and Roy, found that people were happiest on days when they engaged in activities for intrinsic reasons. 
Other theorists argue that subjective well-being is strongly influenced by stable personality disposition. Magnus and Dina in 1991 found a correlation of 0.58 between life satisfaction measures assessed over a four-year interval. On the basis of these results, some theorists suggest that although life events can influence subjective well-being, people eventually adapt to these changes and return to biologically determined set points or adaptation levels, according to Harry and Dury. One reason for the stability and consistency of subjective well-being is that there is a substantial genetic component to it. To some degree, people are born prone to be happy or unhappy. The traits that are most consistently linked to subjective well-being are extraversion and neuroticism, according to Dina and Lucas. Differences in subjective well-being also result from stable individual differences in how people think about the world. For example, certain people attend to and recall the pleasant aspects of life more than others. Similarly, certain cognitive dispositions such as hope, dispositional optimism and expectancy for control are also related to happiness. Income, for example, is consistently related to subjective well-being in both within nation and between nation analysis according to Dina A. Orr. Age and sex are related to subjective well-being but these effects are small too and depend on the component of subjective well-being being measured. For example, in an international sample of 40 nations, Dina and Sir in 1998 found that although pleasant affect declined across age cohorts, life satisfaction and unpleasant affect showed little change. Other demographic characteristics such as marital status and religious activity are also positively correlated with subjective well-being. But the effects of marriage can differ for men and women and the effects of religious activity may depend on the specific type of religiosity being assessed. With the rise in empirical research on happiness, a central question is how happiness might be measured. A complete device might be impossible even in principle, since happiness might involve multiple dimensions. Let us now summarize what we have learned in this module. Aristotle valued intellectual powers over practical ones. Important thing for Aristotle was not to seek happiness for its own sake, but to live virtuously. Epicurus and his followers considered happiness to be the presence of pleasure and absence of pain. In the Middle Ages, the issue focused on one's relationship to God, but Enlightenment thinkers in the 17th and 18th centuries saw it more as a self-evident truth to be pursued and obtained in the here and now. In the 19th century, British utilitarians like John Stuart Mill sought to define and measure the value of actions by how much happiness they produce, the quality of that happiness and how it distributed throughout society. Happiness is commonly understood as how much one likes the life one lives or the degree to which one evaluates one's life as a whole positively. Understanding and facilitating happiness and subjective well-being is the central objective of positive psychology according to Seligman. Positive psychology complements rather than replaces traditional clinical psychology. When used in a broad sense, the word happiness is synonymous with quality of life or well-being. Psychological well-being, social well-being and health-related quality of life 
are constructs related to but distinct from subjective well-being. Psychological well-being refers to the achievement of one's full psychological potential. Social well-being refers to positive states associated with optimal functioning within one's social network and community. Subjective perceptions of well-being have three components. A cognitive component, often described as life satisfaction, and positive and negative affect according to Dina. The preponderance of positive over negative affect can be described as happiness according to Brad Bird. Positive affect reflects the extent to which a person is feeling zest for life, is active, excited, strong and enthusiastic. Negative affect is associated with psychophysiological complaints and poor mental health. An extreme range of emotional experiences may be described in terms of the circumflex space defined by two broad dimensions. The various theoretical perspectives on happiness can be categorized into three categories. Need and goal satisfaction theories, process or activity theory, and genetic and personality predisposition theories.